Here's a debate on the Piers Morgan show, which I think I think is very important because these are two sides of a major debate. And I want you to hear both sides. And I want to then just summarize and bring clarity to the real root of the argument on each side here so we can have clarity on this. Let's watch this together. The reason why I respond to you this way is this is not a new story. This is what I've called, and I will say again, is a Pyrrhic victory. In 82, when they invaded Lebanon, killed 20,000 people, right, tried to weaken the PLO, the occupied Lebanon until 2000, guess what happened? Civilian damage, they had their victory, they weakened PLO. What rose? Hezbollah. Before Nasrallah, they killed the first leader of Hezbollah. Nasrallah came, right? As long as the occupation persists, the problems will persist. The occupation has to end. And now Israel... If you look at the worldwide polls, you know this, Pierce, it is a pariah. The United States and those who support Israel and Netanyahu are seen as pariahs. They are global outliers. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and Hamas leaders are accused of war crimes. Uh, we've seen the spike in Islamophobia, the spike of anti-Semitism. Has it made Israel safer? It has not. And the last thing I'll say is the family no, members of campuses. the hostages have been protesting Netanyahu. And the family members of the hostages have said that he does not care about the hostages. He only cares about staying in power because much like Trump, we know that it's this man is also true. what? Has allegedly committed crimes. And yes, if he actually wrong? steps down, what will happen? Okay. He'll, he'll most likely okay. go to jail. So he needs the okay. war. He needs the war. Let me bring in let me bring in Emily. Emily first, respond to that. Okay. The only correct part about everything that he said was that yes, the hostage families are heavily, heavily protesting that Yahoo because they feel that their children should come home at any cost. And putting myself in their shoes, you have to understand where they're coming from. No judgment there. So I want to execute the situation of a two-state solution. Let's just talk about that for a minute. Unoccupy, remove the occupations, get rid of the settlements. Okay, let's go back to 2005. Let's say we give more land like we gave Gaza in 2005, and the Palestinians now have full sovereignty, and then boom, you have a terrorist group like Hamas that hijacks the country, turns it into a military zone, builds tunnels instead of hospitals, puts uh, 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 rocket launchers and nurseries, makes hospitals Hamas's HQ. What two-state solution can be which done, done under a group of terrorists? It's like, what would Al-Qaeda do if they were given land? What would Hezbollah do if they completely hijacked Lebanon? It's this like, you're, over, you're oversimplifying no, the idea reality. of a two-state solution. I want a two-state solution, but it has to be governed by a non-terrorist group. Why is that so much to Amen. ask for? Hamas ruined Gaza. Yeah, like, let's say the West Bank, what, the PLO ridiculous. is going to take over? Boom, rockets every, say, every single day into Israel, just like Gaza, just like Lebanon. There is no peace with terrorists. And you guys are really making it seem like, oh, if they just unoccupied the, the occupational lands in the West Bank, then there's peace. And everybody then would get along launching, and sing They stop launching rockets but into now, okay, Israel. Before oh, I go to Cheng, before yeah. I go, hang on, hang on. Hang on, Cheng, before I Okay, before this, uh, without continuing this, um, here's, here's essentially what the gentleman was saying. He was essentially saying that the whole problem is the occupation. As long as Israel is controlling the Palestinian areas, we're going to have this problem. Israel just pull out, stop getting involved in Gaza, stop getting involved in the West Bank, and we're going to have peace. The delusion of that we all understand. We saw it happen in Gaza. We gave them Gaza. We handed, we dragged the Jews out of Gaza to give it to them. And why do we get terrorism, terrorism? Because we all know that they want one thing, and that's the obliteration of Israel. And um, what Emily was saying is, no, the first thing that needs to happen is not the end of the quote-unquote occupation. The first thing that needs to happen is the end of terrorism. That's the first. And so the debate is, what has to be taken care of first? occupation of terrorism. The truth is that terrorism must be eradicated first or otherwise there's no way we can resolve anything. And the reason why Israel went through so many operations which of killing terrorists and they did not help is because they never finished the job. They just put out a fire. They just put out another fire and the world came screaming and Israel retreated. The world came screaming, ceasefire, Israel retreated. This is the first time Israel is saying we will not stop until we eradicate the terrorism, and they're doing a fantastic job at it with God's help. And may they continue. Terrorism must be obliterated to the fullest extent possible, of course. In other words, enough that they don't have a power, and it's a, a very small threat that Israel will have to then also have the ability to go into Gaza whenever they want, or any areas that they need to, or Lebanon, whenever they need to, to stop cells which are beginning to grow into entities like Hezbollah or Hamas. And this is the debate. The debate is occupation or terrorism. And we have to be clear, 
Terrorism must be eradicated first before anything. We know that removing a quote unquote occupation, the less Israel controls of the Palestinians while there are terrorists, the more dangerous the world becomes and the closer Israel would, God forbid, God forbid in, in theory, be to extinction. Of course, that will never happen. We must eradicate all the terrorists.